Okay, I think uh, it's the 3.45. Uh, first of all, thanks for being here on Friday um, at 3.45 p.m. So I was expecting I may have very few people. <laughs> uh, again, um, today's talk is all about uh, Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. Um, I think if you look at the whole conference, um, you might have heard about how Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry um, are actually going to work together, you know, are they going to, you know, like how uh, they actually um, mingle, <laughs> how we can actually have these two technologies, um, you know, work together. Um, and also, uh, we, just to add to that, uh, we also have Istio, uh, the service mesh. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Istio or heard about Istio? Yeah, a lot of you, that's, that's really good. Actually, uh, Istio, uh, it's not even a year old, um, but still, um, you know, it is really uh, taking, uh, taking off. Um, in fact, um, I jointly lead uh, one of the work groups uh, with Google um, on Istio. Uh, so I'm going to talk about um, some of the things about Cloud Foundry and, uh, and also the Kubernetes. But also, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, you know, how Istio can be supported on Cloud Foundry. And there is a lot of work, uh, a lot of work streams going on. And um, uh, some of the things that I will actually, I'm trying to put together, uh, the, the point of view also. So it, it may, um, may not happen, but you know, that's the uh, thing that we're going to talk about, some futuristic stuff too. Uh, my name is Surya Dugirala. I'm uh, from IBM. Um, I work in Rochester Labs. Um, so my main job is to um, look at the IBM One Cloud architecture. So today, we're going to talk about uh, the enterprise applications, um, because all of you are actually either running in multiple uh, industry domains and trying to use um, you know, these cloud technologies. End of the day, any technology, unless um, you can clearly use that in the industry, um, it's not going to succeed. So um, the, one of the main things that we look at is we take different uh, industry domains and then see how these technologies, the same kind of application, when you deploy them in multiple technologies, whether it is Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry, and use the service mesh or without using that. So how um, these applications are performing, scaling, and how is the stability of the platform, you know, all those things. Um, and then we will talk about um, some of the projects under Cloud Foundry. Um, you know, that are actually trying to um, work both with Kubernetes as well as Cloud Foundry. And then, of course, Istio. Um, and then we will try to see whether we can actually combine those three and then see how the future is going to look like. So some of the applications that we have uh, thoroughly investigated are, you know, banking, healthcare industry, and airlines, and also some of the legacy traditional Java EE applications also, right? Because uh, most of the customers who are invested already on um, the Java EE type middleware kind of an applications, they would like to get to cloud, uh, of course, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, right? So how, um, how the, what, what is the um, performance and scalability characteristics of these applications when you move them to these platforms? A, a brief um, look at uh, the healthcare kind of application. This is uh, one of the things I think you might have uh, attended my talk yesterday uh, with uh, Kaiser Permanente. Um, this is a, at a very high level. Uh, this is the kind of uh, topology uh, typically you, you can see from a cloud native kind of an application because you will have the cloud piece that is Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes and then you will have uh, the on-premise of course, the, da the data center, that's where you have the systems of record uh, are there. So how you integrate, how the transaction flows, when the transaction flows through um, the front door into the, um, the, the Cloud Foundry, uh, the Cloud Foundry or uh, Kubernetes, and then gets into the, the mainframe or other systems of record. Uh, this is the whole um, you know, transaction flow. And uh, we looked at that, and uh, if you look at some of the more famous microservices um, patterns, there are one of them is the BFF, uh, backends for frontend. Uh, most of you may be familiar with that. So we looked at 
these kinds of applications, when you deploy them on Cloud Foundry, and then same thing, you're going to deploy them on Kubernetes. What are the different things that you're observing? You know, what are the strengths and what's the weaknesses of some of these platforms? And if there are some weaknesses, what are those and can we fix them? Right. Another kind of application is the online banking application. Like, you know, we work on multiple banking applications, banking and financial sectors. Um, one of them is the, I think last year, if some of you might have um, heard me talk about uh, um, with the Royal Bank of Canada on online banking application, which is in production on Cloud Foundry. And, uh, you know, it is um, really rolled out to like 16 million customers. So that's another application that we use to evaluate these technologies. Another uh, cloud native kind of application, this is actually we have developed internally in IBM. We have uh, outsourced, um, sorry, <laughs> open sourced it. Um, to, uh, if you go and look at um, Blueperf, Google it on Blueperf, you can see that. Uh, this is a polyglot microservice application, um, more of a reservations and Ireland reservation stuff, right? Um, this is the one that is being right now um, used for Istio development. Uh, we have developed a, a regression patrol, and this is the application that runs on a daily build with Istio. When Istio community turns a build, this is the application that runs on a daily basis to understand the, the performance implications of all the components of Istio. So let's get to, I'm going to show some of the performance data as well today, uh, just to put some perspective right, uh, on Cloud Foundry and uh, Kubernetes. So some of the, based on our work, some of the main things that, from a Cloud Foundry point of view, these are some of the pain points that we have seen. And in fact, um, I'm closely working with the Cloud Foundry community to make sure that we fix most of these th things so that we will have these enterprise applications scale and perform. First thing is the, uh, the go router, right? As you know, the go router uh, design, um, if you look at just by default, you don't have any kind of keep alive uh, or anything enabled. Of course, we have worked on, um, uh, I think, 253, Cloud Foundry version 253 and beyond. We have the support, but it is not enabled. Because of that, certain kind of applications like um, our KP's health, uh, healthcare applications, we have seen long tail latency. Uh, the long tail latency for, for, for some of you who may not be familiar with that. So that's the, for microservices, when you look at 90th percentile, latency and 99th percentile, uh, there will be a significant spread. So there may be up to like 10x or 8x. Or, uh, so there will be significantly um, higher latency at the 99th percentile, and that will actually, um, is not good for microservices. That is one of the things that's actually go router um, is actually in certain situ situations you see that. And as I showed the BFF, the backends for frontend uh, pattern, um, again, the BFF, if you look at, the node BFF will call the Java API, which in turn will call the systems of record. So it's like kind of a three-level, three-tier um, um, networking, like you know, when, you, when your transaction goes through node to the Java API and back to the systems of record. Um, what happens in Cloud Foundry because of the design so when Java API 1 calls Java API 2, or Node calling the Java API 1, it won't directly go, because it has to go all the way out to the firewall and then get the uh, proxy or the you know, front door, and then gets into the go router, and then it'll get into the next instance in a same cell or a different cell. Because of that, there are so many network hops that you go through, and that will impact the scalability. And we have some solutions for that. I'll get to that next. Um, another thing that when you push, when you do a CF push, uh, especially for Java applications, um, you might have seen significant CPU spikes. You, you get uh, a brief moment, maybe three or four seconds, but you see significant uh, CPU spike. Uh, sometimes that may um, have an impact uh, based on how contended your cells are. Um, it can cause some staging failures. So that's one thing. 
And then you have um, the C groups algorithm. Uh, I think Dr. Jules was talking earlier. Uh, the C groups algorithm is the core algorithm that um, gives you how these applications, there are application instances that are deployed in the garden containers, how you segregate, how these uh, instances are isolated. They're all maintained by the C groups. And when you push an app, also, you, you push an app to a specific um, cell based on memory. So you don't kind of take into consideration the CPU um, that's there in, that, um, in the cell. Because of that, sometimes what happens is you have a very contented cell, but still this application will be placed and staged in that. So that's another issue that we need to look at. Um, then you have the service mesh, right? And as more and more um, cloud foundry applications are more, more of uh, microservices in nature, um, so you need the service mesh to manage um, all that, right? So that's another thing that uh, work is going on, but right now you don't have the, uh, the support for that. So these are some of the, these are the three um, design features that are available now in cloud foundry. Uh, the last one, the OCA one, is the I think it's dropped in 279 or so. Um, I think that's uh, now the uh, version names changed. Um, so the first one is go router keep alive. So the upstream channel keep alive is enabled right now. So because of that, you can actually see um, the the long tail latency and those things resolved, um, and you, you don't have any kind of a, um, you know issues, and it, that will really help. Um, reduce pressure on the go router also. If you go and observe go router, um, you can see the kernel CPU high, um, very high. Maybe sometimes, you know, based on the load, you will see uh, lots of um, kernel CPU being churned on that. So this will solve that. Um, then the second one is, um, as I said, BFF. How can you reduce these network hops? The container to container. Um, if you enable that uh, with the policies that you set up so that you don't need to go all the way uh, back to the uh, front door and then come back. And then the OCI layer, this is basically uh, um, what exactly it is doing, the OCI. Um, phase one is already in. What it is trying to do is actually the build pack mechanism is right now like kind of, it will change from a flat file system to a Docker type layered file system. Because of that, the droplet size will be significantly smaller and that will reduce the, uh, the, the, the CPU spike. So you can see this is the healthcare application and um, you can see the scalability and then you can see the, uh, the throughput number, right? For the same workload, uh, you can see around 500 or 590 or 550 um, that's going and then you can see the knee of the curve there and then beyond that, of course, you reach the saturation for that instance, right? Um, if you look at this on the same thing, if you look at on Kubernetes, you can see it's around, um, around 1,200 or 1,170 or so. So because you have uh, so many of these layers, and um, so you can actually see uh, the difference between the two. And of course, you have to enable all those features that I mentioned because they're not um, enabled by default uh, on Cloud Foundry. Um, online banking application. Uh, you can see this is again on Cloud Foundry. Of course, you can see the scalability. Like you go from one instance to five instances. You know you're um, going from you know like up to two, three thousand from seventeen hundred. So if you were to run the same thing on Kubernetes here, of course you need to um, really look at um, the runtime. Uh, sometimes runtime run algorithms. Um, will um, you know, uh, give you uh, some regressions. Um, you can see that the bottom line that you're seeing, the bottom orange um, line there, that is if you have a Java application runtime um, which is not able to cope up with the backend service latency, like the, you know, your, your online banking application is actually talking to um, a mainframe or you know, some other systems of record, um, then if the latency, backend service latency is high, then you will have an issue there. So you need to adjust that runtime or bypass that algorithm issue. Uh, then you can see the, the scalability, that, uh, the line you have, like the yellow one and the green one. Um, again, not only you 
adjust that, but also you have to tune that to, so that you'll get the um, required number of executor threads. So the green one has enough executor threads provisioned or um, instantiated uh, so that you can actually get the better performance. But uh, the point here is like you can see almost up to 5,000. For the same kind of five instances, you have seen 2,700 in the previous one, and now you're seeing 5,000. Right? And this is the main point. Um, if you really want to scale, Kubernetes, you can really go and you know, scale. You can see that almost um, you know, 4.5 billion API calls, you can see that here. Um, that is the kind of scalability you can get. Um, on, on Kubernetes, um, you're, you're driving almost like 50,000 transactions or API calls per second. So as you can see this, like if you want to have massive scalability and you want to get that linear um, you know, with low latency, right? you, know, you can clearly see that uh, Kubernetes can provide that. Right. So um, Again, with Cube also, right? you can see the backend service latency. Um, you need to take care of that. As you increase the backend service latency, um, you can see from um, you know, 500 to 100, right? So 100 milliseconds, if you have backend service latency, uh, you can see the throughput. And then if you reduce that from 500 to 100, you can, you can see the, uh, the improvement. So um, in your systems, you need to pay attention to how much is the backend service latency, like going from your application platform to the service of record or um, other um, EI APIs, right? Um, this is with Istio. So the same online banking application, now what it is doing is actually you are applying, you're injecting Istio now. So right now, we are actively, as a, as a community, we are actively working to optimize the Istio components, Mixer, Pilot, Envoy, and um, you know, all these internal pieces. Um, but right now, the way it stands at this point, as of 0.8 version of Istio, um, you have to allocate a little bit more uh, resources to get the exact same uh, performance. Um, how much more? Um, you can see up to around 40, 45, 50 percent additional um, resources you need to. And we are trying to reduce that um, by, we want our goal is to see whether we can actually get to less than 10 percent. So with that, um, I would like to see how we are actually going to, what kind of projects that we have in Cloud Foundry that interact um, and actually the kind of, I, I won't say blend, um, but actually they're kind of, they work together with Kubernetes because you have seen uh, the kind of scalability that Kubernetes provides and the runtime platform um, that, that uh, you know, all these microservices. And also it has um, features like the sidecar pattern. So you can actually have, uh, you can inject um, like a Istio type uh, service mesh there, right? So you can see the, these are the different projects that are going on right now um, that will interact with both Cloud Foundry as well as the Kubernetes. The first one, uh, Don has announced yesterday um, about the um, ICF or the IBM Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment. Uh, basically what it does is actually I'm, I will try to do some kind of a demo if it's possible here. Uh, what it does is it will basically deploy Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes clusters. Um, that, that's IBM Container Service. Uh, what it does, you have the control plane and the data plane. Control plane has all the, Q, uh, all the Cloud Foundry specific, um, uh, the fabric components. And then the data plane, the other worker node that will have just your applications or the Diego cells. That's how it will try to create uh, a kind of an isolation also. And, um, and then you'll have control too. The second one is the, uh, the SAP. You have seen that um, Kubernetes um, to Cloud Foundry integration scenarios. Uh, basically, it is similar, um, but actually you can see that um, I think SAP uh, has gone through this. And another thing that the first two are basically you're still running everything on Diego scheduler. 
The third one, what it tries to do is you will have Cloud Foundry, when you do a CF push, what it does is it will bypass that Diego scheduler, and then it'll try to put that uh, application on, run on Kubernetes cluster. So that's the replacement of the scheduler. So that's the one that's a OPI project um, that's being um, worked on right now. Um, another one. Uh, yeah, so the question is whether that will replace if the OPI, the intention of the OPI is to completely replace that whole garden, the Diego scheduler. So there won't be any garden. It will be just Docker, like the parts. Like. Um, so another thing is the SUSE, right? Uh, so say you have the um, containerized CF control plane, right? That's another thing. And then, of course, the Kubo project from Pivotal, right? So there are multiple projects that are right now going through. Um, I didn't really mention here about Istio. I'll get to that next. But these are uh, the things, hopefully, you will hear more updates on this, um, maybe in Basel and uh, beyond that. So this is a, a peak preview of like uh, some of the things that Don showed here. Um, you can see how that ICF, that IBM Cloud Foundry Enterprise Environment, um, works here. And um, this is some kind of an early data from a performance point of view, what exactly it is actually getting. Um, you can see the, the blue bar um, is actually without any front door. Again, it is showing the impact of front door on the overall application latency. Um, and then the middle one is the ICP, right, the IBM Cloud um, Foundry Enterprise Environment. Um, that's where you have the front door, but it goes through the Cube's ingress controller, right? And then the, the red one is the normal Cloud Foundry right now as we run, right? Um, you, you, can, you can see um, the, the value uh, also in the ICF one than the, in the middle one, right? So let me see how I can, I can show you here some of the... Let me just get... Here. Yeah, this is the live uh, cluster that we have right now. Oops. <laughs> I think you guys can see this. This is the current ICF cl uh, cluster that is running there uh, in our lab. Um, so you can see the perf cluster here. Uh, that's where, if you look at, um, this is a cluster that's where the actual Diego cell with applications that are running there. And then if you go to the, the Dell 12 cluster, this is where um, you have the um, Cloud Foundry components that are actually deployed. And you can, this is a Grafana dashboard that shows um, everything what's happening inside both the control plane as well as the data plane. Um, so if I, if I want to go and see, like let's say pod metrics. So you can actually see this um, in a worker node. So the, there are three, this is a three worker node cluster. So you can see uh, 50, this is the worker node that has all the data, that is the Cloud Foundry um, uh, cells, Diego cells, and you can actually clearly see uh, what is happening um, here in this. So all the internal components, internal pieces, um, you can see this. So this is, this is all uh, some of the dashboard that we created uh, for, um, uh, for our uh, performance work. All right, so now I'll go back to So now, uh, let me talk about the Cloud Foundry future directions, as I um, talked about. Um, so these are four different things that are actually happening. 
The first one, as I mentioned about the CFI or the IBM Cloud Foundry Enterprise um, environment, that is running Cloud Foundry on top of Kubernetes. The second one is the OPI, that is replaces, that replaces basically uh, the Diego scheduler with Kubernetes scheduler. So that is, um, it's not running on, but it is actually running in the Kubernetes right there. Um, and then you have the Istio service mesh. I'll talk a little bit about the Istio service mesh, uh, the support, what's the plan, um, how different um, projects are going on there. Um, and then, of course, some of these optimizations that are already there, and there are a um, few other things in the container technology like OCI phase two, and those things are still working through. So this is the Istio's service mesh support on, on Cloud Foundry here. You can see this. Uh, uh, this is a project. Um, I think um, uh, some of you might have attended uh, um, a talk about this Istio uh, previously. So it, you have the Bosch release that packages Istio and Envoy for Cloud Foundry. Um, and you have a co-pilot. Uh, I'm going to show all that stuff. Um, basically, there are two parts to this Istio support. Uh, the first one is the north-south traffic support, and then the second one is the east-west traffic support. Northwest is being worked through right now. East-west um, is the one that um, there are two separate initiatives going on there. Basically, there you have to have um, you know support for a sidecar pattern, so that you can have the mixer support um, and mixer and uh, you know envoy for the you know service sidecar. So you might have seen uh, this from Aaron yesterday. Uh, he talked about how the Istio support for Cloud Foundry is being planned at this point. Um, you can see this is from Aaron. Um, there are two different ways. Either you can actually go to the applications through GoRouter or through Envoy. Envoy is the, uh, the ingress for Istio. So you can actually, either way, uh, you can actually reach to. So basically, if you were to go with Istio, then you can actually replace Go Router as well. So another piece that is actually being developed, again, this is from Aaron. Um, yesterday, you might have um, seen this. The copilot, which will be the, the control plane component that interacts with the pilot, which is, again, another comp uh, control plane item with Istio, so to, to get the support for the north-south traffic. Um, and again, for the east-west, where you want to have complete uh, support for uh, Istio, because you need to have uh, support for the sidecar pattern also. So there is some work, uh, Dr. Jules and, uh, and others are working on, on, the, um, on the Diego cell itself. You can re-architect that container uh, also to support the sidecar kind of a pattern like our pod kind of a style, right? So that you can have, um, you know, two containers in a, in a, in a pod. That because you need that. Uh, in Istio, what happens is when you inject that, so you have the microservice service in a container, and then right next to that in another container, you have the Envoy proxy. So they both are together in one pod. Right? But right now, the Cloud Foundry design, the architecture doesn't support that kind of um, uh, sidecar pattern. So that's, that work is going on with the current Diego architecture or container architecture work. Um, but if you go with OPI, that's another thing that's possible. If we were to go with OPI, and if you replace the Diego scheduler with um, the uh, Kubernetes scheduler, then automatically you'll get that too. So these are the things that are being worked through. There is um, nothing that is finalized yet, but this is how you can actually get, this is one way of getting the east-west traffic support for Istio. Yeah, that's, those are some of the things that I would like to share. Um, I think we have um, uh, one more minute left. Any questions for me? Okay, so the, the question is, uh, yeah, this question is, um, okay, from an enterprise point of view, um, are these two communities, like Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, they're going to coexist, or 
or which one is going to take off or something. That's the question, right? So right now, as I mentioned here, right, right now there is a very good chance of actually uh, getting those two things work together. In fact, even Istio, for that matter. Um, because uh, Cloud Foundry is pretty good uh, in terms of the application, you know, uh, uh, app experience, like, you know, the CF push, and, you know, that, that's like, it's a more of a pass, typical true pass environment. Whereas um, Kubernetes is more, it's good for scalability for operations and stuff, but um, it lacks these advantages that Cloud Foundry has. So um, if we can marry these two things together, I think that will be the best for an enterprise. Uh, and of course, as, uh, as, as more and more microservices are being built, um, and Istio getting more popular, because what Istio brings to the table here is um, you can, as a developer, you don't need to worry about how to get your application, you know, like a, how to manage your traffic, how to manage the security, how to manage the telemetry of all your services. Istio will take care of all that. So your application can be dumb, uh, to, to be, uh, put it frankly, but you will focus as an application uh, developer, you will focus more on, um, on your domain specific things and value added features to your specific industry. And you don't need to worry about uh, security or uh, telemetrics or traffic patterns or A-B testing, canary testing and all that stuff. Give all that stuff to Istio. That's exactly the reason why um, you know, Istio is getting more popular. Any, any more questions? And uh, another thing, I think week after, we have a KubeCon. Um, I'll be talking about, uh, if some of you are coming, I'll be talking about the uh, Google, myself, and VMware guys who are going to talk about uh, Istio uh, on um, uh, performance and scalability and uh, what exactly is coming too. So if some of you are coming there to Copenhagen, um, please stop by there as well. Thank you.